Hey friends, how you doing? Manitoba Hal here, and uh, as you know, I'm on tour, or maybe you didn't, but I have been traveling through Eastern Canada on tour with Mike Bigger. <laughs> playing shows all over the place. Uh, we're in Ottawa this week and I'm staying at a friend's house in Stittsville. So uh, all I have with me is my Barnwood travel ukulele. Well, it's not really travel, it's my stage ukulele. It was made by Fred Casey and it's, it's a thin, hollow body but non-resonant ukulele. So it's not very loud. That's actually really good for practicing when you're in a, uh, a guest in someone's home or maybe you're staying in a hotel somewhere and you don't want to make a lot of noise. Or maybe you just live close with your uh, family and you want something to be able to play ukulele in your room and not disturb too many people. What I wanted to talk to you today about was movable chords. We've talked about this before, but I want to reinforce the value of movable chords for a beginner and why you should learn to use them. Now, it's true that some of them are the more complicated shapes or the more challenging shapes for a beginner to learn, but it's worth your time to put the effort in. And I'll tell you why. First off, all of these first position chords that you know already, you know, your C, your G7, your F, that's all really good, but they rely on the open strings to fill in notes of the chord. When you play a four-fingered chord or a movable shape, you're covering all of the strings at once. And that gives you the advantage of being able to move that chord and therefore I change its name value. So for example, this is a four-fingered F7 here. And I'm covering the second fret on the G string, the third fret on the C string, the first fret on the E string, and the third fret on the A string and that's F7. The beautiful thing about that is if I move that up two frets, so there's on my first finger's on the first fret, move it to the second, that's F sharp seven to the third fret, that's now G7. Now, it is objectively harder to play this G7 than to play this G7 when you've been working on it, but I can then take this G7, I can move it up two more frets, and now it's A7. So by learning this one shape here, just within the first five frets, I have three different chord names. And of course, every fret gives me a new name. So in this case, that'd be F7, third, second fret, F sharp, third fret, G, fourth fret, G sharp, fifth fret, A, sixth fret, A sharp, seventh fret, B, eighth fret, C. So you can see that, I have all of these chords off the one shape. This is also true of my bar D shape. Now, a lot of people use this, the D shape with a three fingered approach that they're given, so they can move it up and they can play this three fingered. I tend to prefer to do a bar. And I've got my pinky up here, so I cover all of the finger, my finger goes across all of the second fret. And then my pinky comes up to the fifth fret on the A string. And that gives me this full-on D shape there. Now, I don't often use the, the pinky, but it is nice to have it there. The same goes for this one for moving. That's D, one fret up, D uh, sharp, one fret up, E, one fret up, F, one fret up, F sharp, one fret up, G. So there's my G major chord. And if I drop my first finger here, G7, that is the same as this or as this. Now you see how they all have slightly different sounds, but they have the same note value. And that gives you a lot of uh, room for expression to find a character of a chord that suits the mood or the atmosphere of a piece you're trying to play. And at the same time, uh, you get to use all of these notes up at the dusty end of the fingerboard. Another movable shape I really like is the B flat shape. That's where you're doing a partial bar on the first fret here on the E and the A strings. And then your ring finger, your middle finger, pardon me, goes on the second fret of the C string. Your ring finger goes on the third fret of the G string. That B flat chord. You can move that one up as well, B flat. One fret up is B, another fret up is C, another fret up C sharp, D. This is a great shape to get used to because it does give you the option of 
grabbing that chord wherever you want. And there are movements that uh, play out in a lot of forms that have you using a chord shape that's like. So if, say I want to end up in B flat, I might do a run that's like. So one and two, three. Same with all, all these, uh, the, the F7 shape is, you know. So you have that ability to do melodic climb downs. So I would encourage you to put some work into um, the, the learning and building into your repertoire of movable chord shapes because it really will open up the doors to you to uh, uh, expand your playing, give you greater flexibility on the instrument, and uh, ultimately make you a better player. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today.